Welcome biology students. This is our lecture uh, continuing with evolution and today we're going to look at speciation. So evolution and speed ultimately uh, evolution is well we have two things here coevolution and macroevolution. So coevolution itself is when a species evolve together. And in macroevolution, it's when you have a uh, evolution happens over a geological time above the level of the species. So it places the species in a time period, like kind of like a birthday. Um, coevolution is we we often see coevolution with uh, organisms that are very closely uh, living close proximity to one another such as if you think of the zoanthelae in the uh, coral or uh, we see uh, that bees and flowering plants co-evolved um, basically there because uh, bees being pollinators for flowering plants uh, one would not exist without the other so when we talk about speed we're looking at how fast does evolution need to happen. And basically, there's gradualism and punctuated equilibrium. And gradualism is when the environment is stable. Species change if needed. It's going to be a very slow process, and it's going to take many steps for them to change and form over uh, many, 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 many years. But in punctuated e uh, equilibrium, it's when evolution hap has to happen quickly. And ultimately, in punctuated equilibrium, unlike gradualism, there, there's this need for a change to take place. And if that change does not occur, um, the population and individuals of that population are, are at risk of dying. So reproduction itself, the need to reproduce and how the species can reproduce changes a species. Remember that reproduction itself is to ensure the survival of a species or a population. So when we talk about reproducing, we often come to this idea of sexual selection. And sexual selection itself is when species and individual select mates based on inheritable traits like color, size, strength etc. Um, sexual selection itself is looking for those desired characteristics that ultimately can be passed on to the offspring to ensure that they are best fit for the environment. And by being best fit for the environment, it's going to ensure two things. One, that the offspring are going to survive and be able to adapt to their environment. And number two, it's going to ensure that the offspring through survival will someday uh, be able to reproduce and have fertile offspring themselves. So when we think of sexual selection, we think of this happening in, in, in nature itself. Um, we're going to have the lioness who's going to ultimately want to mate or choose that, that, that male lion species that is the alpha male, that dominant male with the, the full mane of hair going around the neck. Um, is a very good hunter, very strong, not weak. Um, basically uh, holds the order of the pack. Um, that is that that is an example of a lioness sexually selecting sexually selecting that alpha male of the pack in order to mate and have offspring because that alpha male has those desired traits that are able to be passed on to the offspring that are going to make them uh, the offspring that is best suited for their environment. So a species itself is a group of organisms that can breed and produce fertile offspring. And, and that's very key. That's a, a key part of that definition there, that they can breed and produce fertile offspring themselves, which means that their offspring are able to reproduce and have offspring as well. And ultimately, it shows common ancestry to each type of species along the way. Speciation, on the other hand, is the process by which a new species evolve into two or more new species. So you're going to have a species that's going to develop 
out of or 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 more than one species that's going to develop out of a population. Um, ultimately, speciation is caused by two different factors. Speciation can ca be caused by geography or it can be caused by seasonal change. Um, an example of geography is if you have a group of, let's say, birds like the Galapagos finches that were separated from the mainland and ultimately they've evolved into their own species of finches and through adaptive radiation they were also given different beak types as well. So speciation happens from isolation mechanisms much like the Galapagos finches they were isolated from the mainland population and developed into their own species. And reproductive isolation means that breeding at different times and with different groups. So you have uh, reproductive isolation as one example. Um, behavioral isolation is when you have differences in mating rituals. So ultimately, those differences in mating rituals are going to determine who gets to mate when. Um, geographical isolation, when groups are separated by barriers like mountains, rivers, or bodies of water. And you have temporal isolation. And when you hear the word temporal isolation, you're associating that with time. And it could be day or night, or it could be seasonal um, when you think of, of uh, temporal. So it could be like spring, summer, autumn, or winter. And in temporal isolation, two or more species reproduce at different times. Um, usually, usually when you talk about reproduction with uh, temporal isolation, you think of it as far as seasons. Um, but there are some ocean organisms that will reproduce at night. Um, some additionally take it a little bit further and will reproduce under a full moon. So the, there are different types of temporal isolation um, that are are basically related to speciation. Allopatric speciation happens from geographical isolation. It prevents species from interbreeding with the original members, much like we saw with the Galapagos finches. And the genetic differences that evolve create two different species. And then there's sympatric speciation. And in sympatric speciation, it's going to happen from temporal isolation. And the species are separated by breeding in different seasons. And the best example of this that we can look at here um, on the slides is that of the skunk. So you have the eastern spotted skunk um, with all change of seasons and the western spotted skunk uh, basically in warmer climates year round. And ultimately, these two species, um, when you talk about their temporal isolation, um, it's, it's going to their breeding is going to be different um, based on on the season of the year. And here you can see an example of the eastern spotted skunk. And here you can see an example of the western spotted skunk. So when you talk about reproduction and and um, sexual selection and stuff, uh, a huge thing that plays a role is coloration. And the need to be brighter or the need to be camouflaged will drive species to change based on survival needs and reproductive needs. When you think of like bright coloration, um, that of flashy feathers or bright coloration as a, in, in the form of warning signs or mimicry, um, that brightness or flashiness can be used for one mating, but it could also be used for letting other organisms know that uh, you're a poisonous species. So think of like the poison dart frog or the, um, if you think of the, a wasp with its black and yellow coloration. So the wasp, um, this is where we have Mullerian and Batesian uh, mimicry come into play. But the wasp itself, uh, it has those black and, black and yellow warning colorations and it's harmful because it has a stinger. And then there are animals that will mimic that, such as the wasp beetle. And it's going to mimic that of an animal uh, that is uh, has that same coloration, that black and yellow coloration, as far as mimicry. But it it does not possess the the harmful stinger like a wasp would. 
and therefore um it's uh having that that coloration for protection against predators on the other hand you have some organisms that will mimic another organism that is harmful but they're harmful itself such as when the honeybee which is also black and yellow kind of mimics that of the wasp but it too has a stinger so uh these are types of of coloration as far as uh warning off predators um it, whether that animal itself that mimics that coloration is harmful or not. Um, but you could also use these flashy colors for mating. And we see this with birds. Um, the, the female birds tend to be very camouflage. And they're going to blend in and cannot be seen or may not be able to mate um, due to their camouflage. Um, the, the camouflage of a bird itself is important for the female species because it's going to be the female that typically uh, is going to protect the nest and feed, feed her feed her offspring um, once they hatch from an egg. So she's going to be well hidden for, or want to be well hidden from predators. But the male bird, if we think of a male cardinal, he's very flashy red, bright red coloration. And that's for mating. Um, he very much stands out to any predators, but uh, he will, based on his colors and based on any any type of dance or song that he does, um, will be able to attract a mate. So sexual selection, species and individuals select mates based on inheritable traits like color, size, and strength. And a kind of recap here of evolution and speed. Um, again, coevolution is when species influence each other's evolution, kind of like uh, insects and flowering plants, or more specifically, the honeybee. Apis mellifera with flowering plants, angiosperms. Um, Macroevolution itself is when evolution happens over geological time above the level of a species. And ultimately, when we talk about how fast evolution needs to happen, we think of that gradualism or punctuated equilibrium. And gradual, gradualism is when that environment is stable. Species can change their form gradually over many, many years in a step-by-step -step process. It's very slow. This is a theory. But in punctuated equilibrium, um, that one that ha that is when evolution happens quickly. So it's the hypothesis that evolutionary development is marked by isolated episodes of rapid speciation between long periods of little or no change. So I thank you for tuning in. Uh, this is our last lecture on evolution. Um, make sure you have filled in your note sheet as you went through this lecture. Um, the notes were posted in Schoology as well. Thank you again and have a nice day.